All right, welcome. So we're on Unified now. Uh, box number 22. Yep, 22. All right, actually, before we even start this, I want to make a quick, make a quick note here. Vaccine was box number 21, right? So let me go ahead and rename that guy. Okay. Now we go ahead and we can start off with a rust scan, this guy. As usual, right? Let's go ahead and uh, clear all this stuff out. And we'll start off with our rust scan, as usual, and uh, we'll try to see what we can do. So like we got port 22, 80, 80, 8, 4, 4, 3, 8, 8, 4, 3, 8, 8, 0, 8, 8, 8, 0. So that's, that's great, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and curl that, um, that 80, 80. 8080 and 8443 are most likely the same exact thing. It's most likely for the 8443 is going to be a um, just HTTPS version of 8080. 8080. Alright, we got a location managed. It looks like we got 302, so it's going to redirect us somewhere. Let's go ahead and check that out like, real quick. See what this redirection is all about. Okay, right, so it's redirected to 8443 if we like it or not. We also want to view the certificate. Oh, ubiquity, huh? Looks like uh, we're going to try to hack... Um, who is it? Lions Tech Tips again, huh? <laughs> Alright, so we got Unify Ubiquity Network, it looks like right here. Alright, we got a username version 6.4.54. Let's go ahead and run a... Um, um, Unify Exploit 6.4... Point five four, right? Another log4j. Okay, so it looks like we got log4j here on Unify exploit, right? We got ourselves a nice little um, exploit.py right here too. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and just try it. Let's go ahead. And, I mean, if it's not for this one, it's not going to work. Worst case scenario is it doesn't work, right? So let's go ahead and get clone. We'll do that. And whenever you see a requirements.txt in a Python script, right? Yeah, I pretty much have like <laughs> everything I think I could. But you can do a pip3 tech r um, or a pip3 install tech r requirements.txt. And that'll install all the requirements that you need for something. Um, or you can just try to run it. If it says like you don't have this, then you can just install that pip3 install. So let's go ahead and do a Python uh, exploit.py. And it wants a URL. A callback and then a port. I take it the callback is by the IP address, like my IP address, right? So we have a URL here. I don't know if this is authenticated or unauthenticated. Uh, hopefully it's unauthenticated because uh, if it's authenticated, we don't have authentication yet. So I'm going to grab this like right here. Um, tech I, we need to do an IF config, figure out what I'm running at 1010.14.65. And then tech P, we'll do a port that we think you can talk to, which is 8080. And then we'll go ahead and we'll list it up here on port 8080. All right, um, we will not do that. Let's go ahead and just do uh, 80, and then we'll list it on port 80. Um, the reason that 8080 is working right now is because Burp Suite's up and running. You have not compiled Rogue JNDI. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Can you just compile it for me then? If I haven't compiled it, can't you just do it for me? I guess not. Let's go ahead and see what this is all about. Okay, to download, run exploit manually, execute the following steps. Close the GitHub repository. Okay, we did that. Okay, so we need this log for unify move package tech f utils. Is it in here? Is utils like made in here? I feel like that's 100% something it could just did for me. You know what I'm saying? And I also don't have any of those commands, so I have no idea what he ran this on. Let's go and cd to utils. cd to rogue. Okay, there's nothing in there. supposed to be like here hmm maybe it's in the sub modules I don't know that's a that would be a new one for me I want to try that Looks like we're getting a lot more stuff going on here. All 
Okay, cool. So now we have it. So we got to do the whole sub modules while they had like right there, huh? Okay, I still haven't compiled it. Oh, do I have to do that? Weird move package tech F. For the root of log4 unified repository, compile the project using the command below. Well, I don't have MVN. MVN is not a command I have because I absolutely hate Java. So, okay, so, hmm. Now we need to figure out about this MVN. It's Maven. Ah, that's what that this guy appears for on uh, JDK 11 because, you know, that's new. Thank you very much, Pharma. Thank you very much. I would have got there eventually. I probably would have actually done that. It just would have taken me seven more up and enter and then read the same thing. And hmm, still doesn't work even though I didn't change anything. Haven't changed how I thought about this, but it still doesn't work. Confusing. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, you guys are going to watch the stream. No, I'm <laughs> if I'm insane, what are you guys? <laughs> All right, well, we know a lot of stuff happened. And we got build success, so I'm going to go with cool. Right? Let's try running now. I'm gonna say that's a weird like that's weird isn't it? It says Tomcat like right there. We have not answered a single question also. I totally forgot there was questions on this thing. We're about to go through it. Which of the first four ports open? Okay. Uh 22, 8080, 8443, and 8843. So we had 22, 8080, 8443, and then 8843, right? Nope. That was 100% wrong. I feel like it's not wrong, but 8843, 8443. How do you how do you want me to put this? Obviously, 8443 is at the end, huh? Well, it is ascending order without spaces. I mean, I, that's what I did. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. 22, 8080, 8443, 8843. That's an ascending order. We're never going to pass this one part. We also have 8880. It doesn't want that. 8880. You want something like that? I, I don't I don't know what the hell you want, big guy. Well, no. I mean, we scanned all 65,535 ports. <laughs> we scanned every single one. It's Rust scan. All right. Well, um. You know, I'm starting to remember why I uh, get mad at uh, Hack the Box sometimes. <laughs> Let's run another scan, shall we? We'll rust scan it again. Why not? <laughs> An ascending order. Okay, got it. No, that's not our ascending order. That's your ascending order. Ah, okay. This is the okay. Now we got more. Okay, twenty two six seven eighty nine eighty eighty eight four four three six seven eighty nine eighty eighty eight four four three. Hey oh, okay. What's the title of the software that is running on port eight four four three? Uh, Unified network. What's the version? Oh, we know exactly what version is. 6.4.54. What's the CVE? Does this thing actually give you the CVE number or no? Yep. Thank you. What protocol does JNDI leverage in the injection? JavaScript, it's using log4j. 
What protocol is JNDI leverage in the injection? JNDI server, boom, boom, boom. What protocol is JNDI leverage? LDAP. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anonymous Gifter, as always. <laughs> LDAP. We'll figure out who it is one day. For the people that are watching this on YouTube for the first time, um, there's an Anonymous Gifter that always gives to a Carrot Socks fan? What? <laughs> that always gives to something with a carrot in it. It's always a... Uh, Something funny. I'm always trying to figure out who it is in the chat. But, okay, what tool do we use to intercept this traffic indicating um, the attack was successful? Oh, I mean, we we got the attack. Um, so I have no idea because we just did it. What tool do we use to indicate the attack was successful? To intercept the traffic. Oh, it probably wanted us to, like, ping or something at first, huh? So TCP dump. Did it want us to do that? Yeah. What port do we need to inspect intercepted traffic for? So if it's uh, LDAP, that will be 389, right? Okay, what port is MongoDB right on? 6789, I believe. Nope, not 6789. must be in the interior then. Let's go ahead and look at, see what we got going on over here. Okay, let's go ahead and get a full shell going. Hopefully we can on this thing. Okay, we can. All right, I don't know why I tried to nest that. SS tech to ULPN. That's good. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can try to figure this out then. Got to try to figure out what port is it running on. We got a reverse shell. We can't do SS. Can we just do a PS? Can we PS for MongoDB? No. Okay, what does it want us to do here? What does it need us to do with Mongo? What about just Mongo? Can we do that? No, of course not. It's not running. So I don't know how we would. Huh. It's not running, obviously, so. Okay, there we go. So it is actually running. It's right there. Okay. So it's there. What if I actually need to change my user to somebody else? Or something like that where I need to actually get like a different shell or something like that because right now i'm ubiquity right so i feel like maybe we did change our user and i was wondering let's go ahead and start to look around this thing ok 
Okay, so I can't run sudo. Okay, so we have Michael. What's that, the PS? PS Ox? No, I just forgot about it. Okay, we got to use that text like right here. But we still need that. We're still this guy like right here. But we still got to figure out. Go for Mongo. Okay, there we go. We got port. 27117. There we go. Okay, cool. It's like, geez, Louise. Go and submit that. Okay, what is the default database name for the uni Unify application? So now we need to get into the database for this guy, huh? So to be able to get in the database for MongoDB, man, I, I'm not good with like Mongo and stuff like that. So we could probably just actually look this up. Unify application default database name. Oh, well, we got Ace. Somebody already answered it for us. Thank you very much. Okay, so use Ace. Show collections. Okay, restore access to Unified Controller. Ace. So it looks like it's Ace. Okay, what is the function we use to enumerate users within, data, within the database of MongoDB? Okay, so now we need to actually get into it. Right, and we need to enumerate users. Yeah, I'm not very good with MongoDB. I haven't really ever used it, so. Actually, I think I might actually have notes on it, though, for some reason. I think I've used it in one of the machines before. Mongo Database. I just have Reverse Shell, I think. <laughs> I think that's a Reverse Shell. I got one, so obviously it was a Reverse Shell. That's awesome notes like right there. I think we could do this. You know? <laughs> so DBS would work. Yeah, but we got to get into it first, which I believe is Mongo, right? I believe we could do that with Mongo. Yeah, we can. Okay, so Mongo. Um, help. Is there like a port, like tac tac port or something like that, or tac p? There's a shell. Run the shell to execute files. Port, port to connect to, okay. Tac tac port. Um, that was two seven one one seven, right? Two seven one one seven. Can I do that? Okay, we're getting somewhere. Can I actually like run one of these commands that I have sit over here in it? Can I do this like show databases? Okay, I can. And there's Ace. Hey, oh, we're getting somewhere. All right, we are freaking getting somewhere. All right, so we got Ace, Ace, Dat, Amic, Fig, and Local. All right, so we're definitely getting somewhere like right now. We are accomplishing a task. Let's see here. What is the function we use to enumerate users? Okay, now we got enumerate users, right? Let's go ahead and uh, research that like, real quick. Enumerate users in MongoDB. List users. Sure, why not? Oh, I just saw like right there. DB system users find. Use admin. Can I do that? Use admin. Okay. All right. That worked great. <laughs> Use ace. It's not doing very good. Um, <laughs> I'm supposed to be able to list the users. <laughs> uh, use uh, local. Use config. Yep, we didn't get very far with that one. Okay. Um, for each, can we print them? I don't know if it's a space. thought that was a thing like right there. I thought we could do that. The for each. 
Or is that the uh, script I'm thinking of? Is that the little... Evil thing that I'm thinking of? Because we can do an eval that we can set a command, right? DB system users. So that's not it. Can also do a DB get users or show users. Let's do that. Nope. All right, we will figure this out. DB system user, we just tried that one, right? DB system user find. Then we have the different roles and everything. But isn't that, doesn't the DB, doesn't that look at that database, right? So we, we want to do it for admin. So we do like a DB admin find, right? When we do something like this and then the user thing, right? DB admin, users find maybe? Oh, I really thought we could get it on that one. Can we do it like that with this up here? With the print JSON thing? DB, God, this is a horrible shell. DB admin. I don't know where the hell I'm even adding this thing clear god that's a horrible fucking shell okay uh mongo tech tech port 27117 tech tech eval db.admin uh users find because i think that's looking in the system um in the little system thing right for each i think we could do that Print JSON. I think you can do it like that and it'll print out in a JSON format. Oh. Nope. For each is not a function. I thought you could do that with eval though. That there's a way to be able to do that like right there. Oh, you want to know why? I think we got to go to Ace. Mongo port 227117 space Ace. Ah. Are we getting closer or further away? Just go ahead and get rid of the four each. All right, well, it gave me some, I mean, it gave me back a version. Cool. Man, this is a pain in the ass, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Sitting out of bed and doing this in a hotel room is, uh, killing me here okay so we got to try to find users mongo port uh 277 was it 17 ace Right? Because we got to go to the, that database, right? Then we can do a tac tac eval. DB admin find. And we should be able to find the users. So dot for each. I don't know if it needs to be that each needs to be capital E. Um, print JSON. There we go. We just got it. So we have, we want, yep, that's not annoying. <laughs> Let's go ahead and throw that into here and see if that's what they want over here. DB, admin find. Yep, okay. Woo, okay, what is the function we use to update users 
within the database. DB admin update. All right. What's the password for the root user? Great question. All right. Did we drop the password out? Whenever we did this, we got name X Shadow. I mean, we have X Shadow, so that's a uh, good. All right. Let's go ahead and try to find the root user in here. So is that going to be administrator? Is that what it's talking about? We got administrator, Michael, Seamus, Warren, and James. I'm going to go with administrator. I'm going to go with that's going to be the root user. Then we have their. Okay, we'll try it with John. See if that actually works or not. All right. What is the password for the root user? It's a great question. They ask a lot of good questions of this, right? They do indeed ask a lot of good questions in this. So what is the password for the root user? I don't know. How are we going to know the password for the root user? Like, is it talking about like root, like the actual machine itself? Like, I don't really, I don't, not really understand. Like, which, like administrator? Because it still has a crack chat. So that's what I'm wondering. There still has a crack chat then. No, we still not get anything. Okay. Let's go into here. I wonder if it's talking about administrator, um, admin, admin. We got administrator, right? That's one of them on this machine, right? Okay, nope. Ad administrator password. Nope. Just don't really understand how I'm supposed to know that. I have his ID. I give you his ID, maybe. What's the hint for this one? What do you mean? What root user? It's not crackable. Then how the fuck are we supposed to know what the password is? What kind of white trash shit is that? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's some West Virginia shit, like right there. So okay, so we know it's not crackable. All right. And now we're just supposed to just randomly. So if it's not crackable, Rocky.txt, then what word list? Like, I, now, I'm, now I'm confused. <laughs> What's the password? I don't know. Well, it's not crackable, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> we did put in the hash. No, the hash is way too long. Look at it. It only wants that much. <laughs> It ends in a two. Then how would we, how would we ever possibly, what's the password? I don't know. Well. <laughs> okay. So we know this is the JSON format, right? So why don't we just go ahead and just, I don't know if we're going to mess up this whole lab by changing this guy's password. But I feel like we need to change this password to be able to get into it, right? To be able to get into the other part. Maybe once we get into it, that's why I asked us what the update thing was. Maybe we need to get into it, then we can do it. But like, <laughs> this is like a really weird play. <laughs> What's the root user's password? Huh, good question. Yeah, you can't crack it, so. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thank God. 
Okay. So we need to, it's a SHA-512 password, right? So let's go ahead and, um, no, not up there. What is it? Um, what is it again? It's for SHA-512, make password, right? Right, and then we want to do a SHA-512 password, correct? Uh, attack M, SHA-512, right? And then from here, we can lastly um, go ahead and put in the password that we want, right? So we can say like admin. And then that's the SHA-512 password right there, right? So now I'm going to write this out over here on my own terminal. Because this is probably going to take a minute. So let's go ahead and go back up to administrator. Because we got to put this in the JavaScript format, right? So what we have to do now is we're now going to have to do a Mongo, right? We got to do... Um, um, the port two one two seven one one seven ace right, and then we gotta do a update, which is going to be the db uh, user update right or db admin update. So then we should do a db admin update. Well, we gotta do the eval right. So we gotta do a tac tac eval. Um, user dot admin dot update. Right, no, db, db, dot admin, dot update, right? We're crushing it so far. Okay, now we want to update the, that's his ID, so ID, and then I don't know if we need like an equal sign. It's JavaScript, so we're probably not going to be an equal sign, right? It's probably going to be something like this, right? ID that, and then object ID, so we're just going to keep that same, right? Everything's pretty much going to stay the exact same. I don't know if we need that comma at the end there, though. I feel like we most likely do need that comma at the end. But do we need to JavaScript? So we should have to do it like that, right? And do we just have to keep working at it like that, right? Something like that, like right there. No, I don't think that's no, because it should just be, um, I, I don't think it's going to be underscore ID. Because I've seen that before. Where it's like underscore ID, but it's actually not. It's actually just regular ID. I don't think it should be. You know, you're actually probably right. Let's go ahead and change it to underscore ID. You're most likely correct. Okay, there's that. All right, then we got to do the name, right, for administrator. Or do we even have to do that? Do we just have to update just the object ID and then just tell it what object ID we're going to do? And then just... Do the X shadow, and we have to update that. So with this, it should be set right to uh, set a new um, hash in there, right? Set that guy like, right there. I think it's like that, correct? And that's going to be X underscore shadow, right? And then I have to put in the hash. Do I have to do uh, little quotation marks? Probably should be dollar sign set. Quotation marks around this. That. Yeah, it says an operator. You have dollar sign. And then we got to put this in, like, right here. What the fuck's this Lenny 8.1 at the end here? That shouldn't be there. What the fuck is that? I want to do this again because that's really weird. I don't know what the fuck that Lenny is. I feel like that's not supposed to be in there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no idea what the hell that Lenny is over there. Okay. Okay, there's that. We are crushing this, I feel like. Probably not. It's probably all going to be wrong. Okay, now we need to end everything out, right? So now we need that, that. And I'm pretty sure we need another one of these guys in there. Uh, maybe not. I feel like we do. I feel like I'm fucked up somewhere. I think in front of that set, I think we're probably supposed to have a... Um... No, I should have to do that because it should close out this guy over here. Because that one closes out... Yeah, it should close out that one over there. It should go like that because that guy should close out this one up here. But it should turn a different color. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I 
I shouldn't have what to pay closed brackets because look, we got open. Well, this opens, open again, closes like right there. Oh, that bracket like right over there. I see. After that's before that comma, after that comma like right there, we should get rid of that one. There we go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try to throw this into there and watch it fail. You know, if we follow the uh, hack the box walkthrough, this probably be a lot easier actually. Probably just copy and paste. Okay, well, that didn't work out at all for us. <laughs> I have no idea what it wants. So, that did not work out at all. That guy. That guy. That guy gets closed out by that guy. That guy gets closed out down there. So, they're all closed there. Everything's good. So what could you possibly need? It's because you got like a shit shell. Is that why? Do I have to put that little thing at the very end? I don't think so. I'll do that with evil. I don't. Okay. Something happened. So let's go ahead and do our set command again. There, there's our print JSON. I just saw it. And let's see if that hash matches this hash over here for administrator now. See if it updated. No, it did not. All right, that's good to see. <laughs> What's up? I think you have too many. Yeah. Oh, after object ID. Yeah, the one before the comma. I feel like that should have worked. Unless we got the object ID portion wrong of it. Match one, modify zero. Okay. Like, should we do this one thing again where we print? I don't fucking know if that even says print. I have no idea what that even says anymore. Should we just try logging with administrator and admin? Even though the hashes ain't added up. All right, let's try it. Let's try to just log in. Um, it is underscore ID. All right, cool. Hey, just because the hashes don't add up, fuck it, right? We still got in. So, uh, administrator, and we change the password to admin now for MongoDB. There. Now we still need to find the root password. <laughs> That's not crackable. Um, <laughs> we probably just changed it. So now it's really, we're really never going to find it. Client, statistics, insights. I don't know, insights? Yeah, I want an insight on what is the root password. Events, alerts, and then settings. Okay. Um... So now we have all that. Now we change his password. Now we got to try to figure out how to get this root password. Settings is always a good place to start. User interface. Remote access. Does Rue have remote access? Elite device? Nope. Okay, it's not elite device. Backup? No. Guest control? Profiles? That's good. That, that one looks good. Default? What are you? Edit? Nope. That one's very good. Services? Admins? Is Rue in here? Nope. 
Why would he be? That would be a fucking, obviously a good idea. Okay. So now he's got to figure out where the hell Root's even at. This one had the most information on it. Scroll down. Hey, oh, we found Root's password. Not a crackable pass. Okay. I guess it's not crackable. They were correct. It says it right in it. Okay. So we got that. Okay, now we need to get rid of the user flag, which <laughs> did we? Uh... Oh, we actually got a reverse shell, don't we? Crushed it. We grabbed the user flag. I'll say, well, how the hell are we gonna get that? All right, so we grabbed the user flag. Now let's go ahead and throw that into here. And now we just need the roof flag. So now we need to figure out. I guess, can we change Root's password, or can we just use that same password? Like, is that the actual, like, Root also on the box? No, it's not. I didn't actually give it the right password, right? Okay, so it's not that. Can I not change like that? Is it SSH password? Is it because I'm actually in Unify? Is that why? Because I'm like in that thing and not actually in the regular. Okay, let's go ahead and throw that in there. Okay, supposedly Root has. Okay, let's go ahead and see if Root can log in here. Let's go ahead and try that. All right, cool. We're in. Thank God. Man, that one was something else, huh? <laughs> that one was 100% something else. Oh, God, there's still a couple more. Oh, man, that one took a minute. See how long that one took. I can't see it on this thing. Never mind. Oh, yeah, 42 minutes for that one. Wow. Yeah, that one took a while. All right, well, we are finished with it. We are finished with, um, what is it, Unify, like right there? Let's see here. That's a very easy box for some reason. <laughs> I guess if you're following the walkthrough, you know, you'd be like, oh, I get it, oh, I get it, you know. There's a lot of, oh, I get it, but, yeah, that one was rough. So we worked on MongoDB. We worked on... Finding the root password. <laughs> Can't crack it, but we found it. Right? But um, no, we worked on MongoDB. We worked on a little bit of Java, like trying to like change something out. Utilizing MongoDB to change out a password. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's uh, really about it for it, for the whole thing right there. Uh, we found a Unify um, exploit for that version number. And we were able to get a reverse shell with it and everything. So then also that PS aux. Right, instead of just SS, tag 2 LPN, you can also do PS aux. So that's going to be it for that one, like right there. I don't know if I actually want to continue.